So you want to do some drawing and you want some advice or some tips on drawing with a ballpoint pen. Now the ballpoint pen is great for anybody from a beginner to a professional. What I like about the ballpoint pen is that it's very cheap. You can buy these in you know packs of 12, 24, 36, or even 100 or so. Um, you can buy them in bulk online. Now with a ballpoint pen, there's something you can do that you can't do with a lot of other pens. And that being that you can't get that sketchy look like you can get with um, other pens such as um, you know, like a fine liner or a, um, some fountain pens. Although if you want to get that real sketchy look, you could just draw really fast and have a pen that has a um, non-flexible nib or use a quill pen. But um, with the ballpoint pen, um, if you hold it at an angle, as with a lot of pens, you can get lines that are lighter or darker, um, thicker or thinner. And with the ballpoint pen, when you're holding the pen, the more angle you have the pen, the lighter the line is going to be. So if you're sketching um, a person's face, or let's say you're going to draw a tree or um, a rock, or be it anything, when you're holding the pen, if you hold it vertically and press, you're going to get um, you know, a bolder and darker line that we're going to get if you hold it at an angle and that is because less of the pen is coming into contact with the paper so when you're drawing with this keep in mind the angle that you're holding the pen and also remember the pressure that you're putting on the paper so the more pressure you have on the paper the darker the line is going to be and the less pressure you no know, obviously the lightest the line is going to be and so if you're wanting to draw something and let's say you want to give a shading look to it like you would get with a graphite pencil and you want it to all kind of be blended in now what you can do is just make really light lines over and over and repeat that right beside each other like this and that'll give you a shading look just like you can get with graphite but it is not erasable so that can be something that um, might be hard for people to overcome when they're trying to draw with ballpoint now also with ballpoint um, something that is more difficult to do when you're doing um, with pencil is doing cross hatching it's great for that so you can get your cross hatching lines you can make them thinner thicker you can make them darker or lighter and that's the difference between a ballpoint pen and some of your other pens, such as a fountain pen. Um, you know, with a fountain pen or um, a fine liner or a Sharpie or something like that, the lines are always going to be dark. Um, the only way you can get that lighter with a fountain pen is if you lose, if you start using a gray ink or if you use a ink that is um, you no know, watered down or something. And with the ballpoint pen that I'm using here which is a cheap one, it's just a big um, round, round stick and it is a medium size so you can get these really cheap online um, so about pen pressure with these now when you're drawing you don't want to push really hard you're not trying to uh, stab into the, the paper obviously what you want to do is just make Practice learning the, the um, pre different pressures for the pen. Um, kind of like if you're drawing on a tablet, a drawing tablet. It has pressure sensitivity. Now, the drawing tablet's always going to be really accurate with that because it's programmed to be that way. So what you want to do is try to program yourself to where you have really good um, pressure sensitivity. And to do that, it's all down to muscle memory, repeating it over and over and over again. So just practice drawing your lines um, really light, and then practice drawing your lines darker, 
practice doing it at different angles. Um, you know, don't just always do it at you know, one angle. And another thing too is, depending on how you hold the pen, that's gonna affect how your drawing looks. Now, if I'm drawing something really detailed and I wanna get in really close, then I'll hold the, the pen like this so that my fingers are near the tip of the pen so I have more control with it. And if I have my hand back farther like this, I can get more of a sketching look to it and I can get lighter shading that I can't get if I'm holding the pen like this. Now, as you can see, if I'm holding the pen, you know, like that, it's really hard to, to move the pen all the way across the paper. And that's because you're just using the tips of your finger. So what you want to do is just move your hand back. You can get that full movement. You can get the full wrist movement. And if you need to, you can get your whole arm into the movement of the drawing. You know, such as if you're doing a really big drawing, um, or even if you're doing you know, a big sketch or something on a large piece of paper on a wall. And so practice drawing with um, your hand like this, real close to the tip of the pen like that. Practice drawing farther back. Practice drawing with wrist movement, finger movement, and shoulder movement. Um, I see a lot of people that only draw with their finger, you know, the tips of their finger or just their wrist. I think th the reason for that is because you know, we start writing and that's how we're taught to write is to you know, hold it like this. Now, there are other ways to, to hold a, a pen or a pencil when you're drawing. And I'll show you a few examples for that just for ballpoint pens, but I'll go into depth more um, another time in another video about different ways to hold a pen and how that will uh, affect your drawing. So for the ballpoint pen, you know, if you're holding it up close, you're going to get, you know, better details. And, you know, if you want to draw something really detailed, you get in really close and you know, just really focus on it. But if you're drawing something more expressive and larger, you want to use um, your shoulder. Use your whole arm in the movement. And you'll get um, a better sketch look, like a sketch look to it. And it'll, it'll turn out the way that you want. Now, if you're just using your fingers like this, it's kind of hard to, you know, you can't really... Because if you try to draw with just the tips of your finger with the ballpoint pen, the problem is, is your lines are going to be like that. So let's say I want to like sketch the side of something. Whereas if you're using your whole um, arm or, like, or your wrist, um, but an example I will give you is the wrist movement and then the arm, whole arm movement. So if I'm using my wrist, I can go part way, but then I have to move my arm and then go the rest of the way. Now, if I'm using my whole arm for that movement, I can go like this. And you've got the whole line there. You don't have all these sketchy pattern shapes that um look like, you know, <laughs> looks like somebody carved it into a piece of wood. And so to practice doing that uh, full range of motion with your arm, and um, that'll help you a lot with your ballpoint pen drawing. Now, if you're just drawing something tiny, and it's you know, on a, a small piece of paper that's, you know, say five by seven inches or um, no less than eight by ten. Then you can just do wrist movement. And um, what I also like about the ballpoint pen is that the, the pen might say medium, but you can get finer lines than what you can get with other pens that say medium. Um, for example, let's say I have a pen and the pen, um, the nib of it is fine. Now... The size that the tip of the pen never changes, like for example with microns, um, which are different than ballpoint pens because a ballpoint pen has a small ball at the end of it, and it rotates, and moves, and the ink goes from that little ball at the end of the pen onto the paper. Whereas with microns and um, you know like a like a sharpie pen or um, like the ultra fine point sharpies. The nib of that, you know, the ink is always the same amount, whereas this you can vary it with the angle. And um, now, and with these, is that the ink isn't archival as much as um, other pens, such as Microns or um, 
non-fading or shovel inks that you can get in um, other pens. But they're great for people that want to start sketching and um, anybody that wants to improve. Or even if you're a professional and you want a pen that you can um, you know, sketch with, but let's say you're low on money or you don't have um, your name brand or expensive or professional pen with you, you can just grab one of these because you can pretty much find them anywhere. It doesn't have to be this brand specifically. It's just the one that I use because I can get them in no big case of them for really cheap. And um, so this is just the ones that I happen to use right now. And uh, I've, I've used other ballpoint pens. And the ones that are like, um, I've tried Papermate and um, some other brands as well. They work pretty good. But what I like about the ballpoint is that it's just more reliable. And I don't really have as many issues with it as I do with some of the other pens. Um, although one thing I do like about the Papermate ballpoint pens is that they have like a tripod grip. So if you're a beginner and you want to learn, you know, the proper way to hold a pen, that'll help teach you how to do that, such as um, some examples I've talked about in other videos with a fountain pen. But anyways, back to the ballpoint pen. Um, these come in different colors. The one I have here is you know, the big round stick medium. They come in um, fine, medium, and bold. So you've got you know, different sizes that you can use. And the, the fine tipped ones are really, really fine tipped. They're like the really small microns. Yet these are really cheap. And the bold ones, they're really bold. You know, like the larger sizes of um, uh, micron pens that you can get. And... You know, the line with you get with this medium, um, it's pretty standard. And you can get very thin lines just by moving the pen really fast. And so that's something you do can do with any type of pen. Um, well, almost any kind of pen. Um, there's a lot of variation. But generally speaking, you can do that with most pens. And but with the ballpoint pen, you can also, you know, not only do you get the thin line but you can get the line that is lighter so when you're drawing you can get more variation you can get um, different tonal values and everything so instead of having to do so much cross hatching and relying on you know drawing things like this and then having to go back over it again and then say you don't want to darken this area and then have to cross hatch over that well you don't have to just do that with ballpoint pens you can draw something you can draw it light like this, like it's shaded, like you would with a pencil, and then you can go back over it over here, and then, you know, darken that area. So you don't have to just draw bold lines. And um, another thing I will mention is that the paper you're using for ballpoint pens, if you're using a very smooth paper, you're going to get a line that doesn't have as much, you know, variation in the line itself and what I mean by that isn't like width but it's more so when you're drawing the line it's going to be more uniform you're not going to have as much texture in the um, line as you would with a more rougher paper now if I have um, a rougher paper that I'm drawing on I'm going to get um, the lines that have little tiny spines in between where there's just little little tiny sections that have lighter ink and if you're drawing something um, such as the skin or a texture that can benefit you so if you use, want to use a really rough paper um, such as like like a, a rough bristle board then that will work great for a ballpoint pen and the paper I'm here using here is again just a really cheap uh, printer paper get huge packs of them for really cheap and what I usually use for these ballpoint pens is like, um, I'll use like a medium texture, kind of rough paper if I'm wanting to do um, portraits and if I'm drawing something larger. And if I'm drawing something that requires a lot of detail and it's really small, I'll use smoother paper. And um, I'll, I'll use sketchbooks or I'll use like the loose sheets of paper. But... Um, I find that I prefer, um, if I'm drawing 
Um, now this is a quick sketch and I'm at home. I like to use my loose sheets of paper. But uh, if I'm on the go, I like to use my sketchbook. And um, I usually use the smoother paper for more small detailed drawings because I don't have to worry about the roughness of the paper affecting the line that I'm making. And so the, the paper I'll, I use, I'll leave a link in the description of this video down below so you can find that. And um, I think everybody can find where to get these at, but I'll leave a link to it anyways because they're pretty well known and popular. But um, yeah, I, I like using this pen because it's cheap. It works great. Um, it's good for beginners, professionals. Um, it's good on the go if you need something to draw with. You can find them anywhere at an office, um, at post office, anywhere you can go you can find these. And so, because you can just find them anywhere, it makes it pretty convenient. Um, you know, it's, it's like with um, you know, an expensive fountain pen or a, um, a expensive uh, type of, uh, what do you call it? They're like microns. Uh, man. Okay, now this part I'm going to cut in the video and then go over to the next part, okay? And I'm going to start talking again in 3, 2, 1. Now, with the pens that are you know, really expensive, like the fountain pens and all that, you're not going to just find those laying around, so this is going to be beneficial to you. And um, so, back to some other examples for drawing with a ballpoint pen. Um, you know, I talked about cross hatching. I talked about line variation. I talked about how to get um, lines that are smoother, lines that are rougher, and what paper, you know the different papers, and um, uh, no cross hatching and uh, kind of shading like you would with a pencil. Now, I feel like I've covered most of everything for this. And if there's anything that uh, I haven't covered that you'd like me to talk about in another future video go ahead and let me know in the comments down below but um for now i think this will do and yeah if you have any questions go ahead and let me know but i'm gonna go ahead and go work on some drawing with a ballpoint pen and i'll be uploading that video later on this coming week or two and uh if you have any questions or suggestions go ahead and let me know and you all have a wonderful day see ya